Okay, hi folks. So today I gave a short presentation on how I use getting things done methodology or GTD with Asana. So I thought I would record it and share it with others because it may be helpful if you're trying to use Asana at Acquia or at any company really. So this is specific to the tools we're allowed to use at Acquia. Um, so I'm kind of constrained by those and it's also the way that I use Asana which suits my needs. So it may not suit everyone's needs and it may not be the pure way to do GTD. So with those caveats out of the way, let's get started. So one of the core principles of getting things done is establishing all of the places where you have information coming in to you, things that you need to take action on, for example, and making sure that you are able to respond to those and put them into a system that you can come back to and prioritize things, organize things and quickly see what needs to be done when, what are the next actions that have to be done to move that thing forwards. So for me, the first thing to start with is where is that information coming from? What sources of incoming information are there? And uh, there's main three main areas. So there's Gmail, there's Slack and there's Asana. There are lots of other things that I use that send me information, but I direct all of those notifications to those three channels and those are the three places that I check. I do have to check like two different Gmail inboxes, for example, my Acquia one and my Mortic Community one and obviously my personal one, but here we're mostly talking about using it in the work capacity. GitHub notifications, I get pushed to Slack, so I only have to check Slack. Um, Slack notifications, I actually push those into Asana if there's something that comes up that I need to respond to that is not a quick response. Community forums comes to me in email. Jira and Confluence is a bit annoying at the moment. Um, one comes in Slack and one comes in email. Uh, I get Slack notifications for Jira and Confluence in the community. And obviously we have the Asana inbox for work and also for personal, because I use Asana in my personal life as well as in my work life. So. Once I kind of defined those and, and as I mentioned, set about minimizing the inboxes that I have to check, the next thing was about setting rituals for checking them and making sure that I do regularly come back to them. And as soon as I get out of these work uh, rituals, I it, it all just goes to pot and I end up just doing whatever I feel drawn to do rather than the things that are important. So I can't overemphasize the importance actually of having those rituals that you follow. So for me, I block out 30 minutes in the morning, 30 minutes after lunch and 30 minutes before I leave for the day to go through my tasks and my inboxes and make sure everything's taken care of. I do a weekly review on a Monday to look at what happened last week, what's coming up this week, what do I really need to get done, what's high priority. And then quarterly reviews, usually around the time where we're setting our OKRs, I look at what did I do last quarter, did I meet my goals, were there things that fell through the cracks, why did they fall through the cracks and yeah then planning for the next quarter really and thinking about what I need to do and what tasks I need to um, prioritise in the next quarter. For me the GTD principles are what has been most helpful and I don't like follow them really really strictly but some of them have been really helpful for me to be able to quickly get to the bottom of what needs to be done next or what do I need to do when I'm in this place. So I use tags really heavily for context in Asana. Where it happens I use tags for like GitHub website Slack who it involves, who, like who are the people who I need to talk to about this thing, the kind of work. So for me, deep work means you need to chunk some time out in your calendar to do these things because it's hard to concentrate on it if you're being disrupted. And the kind of activities, so I have stuff that I like doing and don't like doing, so I try not to make sure that I have lots of stuff I don't like doing in the same day. That will be a bit of a rubbish day. I use a custom field in Asana for guesstimating how long it's going to take, so that's called time it takes to complete tasks. One for the status, so that's in, whether it's in progress, whether it's blocked, whether I'm waiting for something. That's called status underscore underscore and I don't know why, but it is. And uh, the custom field for priority, which is called priority, so that's high, me high, medium and low. Mainly I use the high one to flag up things that absolutely must be done by that date. When I use a due date and it's high, that's a hard stop. It has to be done by that date. So that's how I personally use priority. 
um, but you, yeah, you could use it for different ways. Also, I use low priority for stuff that's more like I could do this if I have time. Like it does need to get done, but it's not something that I absolutely have to do right now. And I use Asana projects um, in an interesting way, probably for most people. I used to create a project for everything that was more than however many tasks it is that says that David Allen says. Um, and I just got project overwhelm. I had so many projects in Asana. I couldn't always see what I needed to do on, and I had to go find the project to see what I needed to do and it just wasn't working for me so what I do now is a slight hybrid so I have a private project which is called next actions I have all my tasks across all projects get added into that project automatically or manually if it doesn't work automatically and then I have a section in there for overdue things which is um, created by the workflow and a section for in progress and a section for waiting. And I just don't look at the incomplete, uh, the completed tasks. I just look at incomplete tasks. I also have a private project for my OKRs, objectives and key, uh, key, key results. This allows me to keep track of my objectives and my key results. So objectives I create as milestones in that project. Key results I create as tasks within that milestone. I create a project with anything that has more than about 10 tasks or anything that happens regularly. So like meetings that happen on a weekly basis or a monthly basis, I create a project for. Anything that has less than 10 tasks or I know is not something that is going to roll on, uh, I generally do that with a task and subtasks in it rather than creating a project. So that's not technically how David Allen says you should do things. But for me, as I say, I just got project overwhelm and I find it easier to keep it slightly succinct and not have quite so many projects in Asana. So the way I work around this is in the Mortic community, I have to kind of oversee five teams and a whole load of initiatives and a whole load of other things in the community. So I have one project called Mortic Community. And within that project, I have sections for each team or each initiative and what have you. So very quickly, I can see at a glance what's the next actions I have to do in each of those settings. They can also come up in my next actions. But if I need to look at this quickly, then I can do that. And it really does help me keep track of what needs to be done in each setting. So if there's a product team meeting coming up, I can see what is on my to-do list that needs to get done for the product team. What's my next task for the marketplace initiative, for example. When I tick one of those off and there's nothing else in there, then I have to write what's the next action, what's the next action. So that I found that really works for me. I did used to have a separate project for each team. So a whole, you know, about 10 or 15 different projects. And it was just overkill for me. And so this works much better. And you can see the tags in use there, the time taken and the status fields and due dates. I only really use due dates if there really is a due date that it needs to be done by or that I've imposed on myself because I really need to want or want to get it done by that time. So for me, due dates are quite important. I also really heavily use saved searches. So saved searches, you can search for something, including using a custom field, which I'm using here. And in this case, it allows me to say what tasks are there that are only 30 minutes in duration. So this is why for me, putting a time to the task is really important. And then you can save that search and it appears in your saved search on the left. So you can see I've got one for like tasks I've assigned to other people that I'm waiting for. Tasks that are due in the next seven days, which are high uh, priority. And then I've got all of my time based tasks. So if, there, if I've got 10 minutes in between sessions or I've got a half an hour of an afternoon, I can quickly see what tasks are the most pressing that will only take me half an hour based on my estimates. And then I can start to work through those. I also use um, the tag lists to create quick lists, quick reference lists in the favorites section. So when you create a tag, you can click on that tag and it takes you to a filtered list of all the tasks in Asana using that tag. If you click the star at the top here, that will then uh, save it to your favorites. And you can also change the color of that tag so that it's visually easier to distinguish between the other tags. And there's also an option on this menu, which is add tasks via email. 
So I'm going to talk about that as well. This favoriting process, you can also do that with projects as well. So you can have tags and projects in your favorites list, which I use extensively. The Asana app for Gmail is really clunky and slow. So what I've actually done is created a contact in my Google contacts. The first name is add to Asana and the last name is the tag or the project that I need to put that task into. And then I um, forward an email that I received to that contact. So if I need to add it into the Savannah tag, I forwarded it to add to Savannah and it adds it to, to Asana with that tag applied and then I can add the other tags as I, as I need to. You can also CC people and they will automatically be added as collaborators in Asana. Uh, so that makes it very quick if you are working in a team-based situation with other people. Getting tasks from the inbox to Asana in a project is very similar, but it's not so easy to find the link. So it's under import and then email. And again, you just grab the email address that pops up when you press email, paste that into the contact. So in this case, Asana ne uh, next actions, this is going into my next actions project. And then you can forward to that email address really quickly, like five, 10 times faster than using the um, the attachment, uh, the, the Gmail integration for Asana. And this also will forward things like attachments and things like that. They'll also be added onto the task. Great. So I also use quite a lot of Asana automation. So this is under the workflows, uh, customize section and then workflows. And it's pretty basic. So like you can't really configure your own things because they have like certain tasks that you can use. But these are some of the ones that I use a lot. So it used to really irritate me that when you added a task to a project, it would just jump, dump into uncategorized or at the top of the list or something. So I have one which moves all the new tasks into a particular section like waiting, for example. If something's overdue by uh, more than one day, then I have it moved to the top of my overdue list that's on my personal next actions project um, if something is being added to a project like my next actions where everything needs to be assigned to me so that it appears in my t in my uh, tasks then i also can assign it to myself and i use the add to another project when i've got other projects like the mortic community one where anything that i add there that's assigned to me i want to be moved to the other project so this is actually just using a one step if it's in this task add it to my board but you can say if it's in this project and it's assigned to me add it to this board so you can build slightly more complicated um, automations in asana there are some downsides that i struggle with with asana particularly with the security side of how things are set up at, at Acquia. Tag lists, um, when you use a tag list and you have a task in more than one project is duplicated, which is a bit annoying. It would be better if it wasn't duplicated. So that's a feature request, I think, for Asana. Um, without Zapier, it's really hard to get things like GitHub review requests and mentions into Asana automatically. We Zapier does it very, very simply, but we're not allowed to use Zapier uh, at, at Acquia. So, that's a real pain. I haven't found a really good way yet of automating that process. At the moment, they come into Slack. So I guess I could add that message in via the Slack integration, but it's a bit clunky. The same is true of Jira, Confluence, mentions and assignments. At the moment, I get them come into my inbox and then I have to do things with it. Or I get them come into Slack and then I have to do things with it. It's much better if you can automate that process and have it go straight into your Asana project preferably at the right place with all the information. Really frustrating for me is that you can't have one centralized list. That's one of the main principles really of GTD is that everything is in one list. Whereas here you have a home list and a work list and it's all in the same interface. Um, it's not all in the same interface, sorry. So you have to have two separate windows open. And for me, that's really clunky and frustrating but there's not much I can do about it. That's just the way it is at Acquia. Um, and the other thing is not everyone uses Asana. So most of my colleagues are volunteers in the community and in the community we use Jira and GitHub. So I really am using Asana myself to organize myself and not so much in collaboration. 
Uh, but the other people I'm working with are not using that tool. They're using something else. So sometimes there's quite a bit of duplication. Um, I have to like add stuff into Asana for my workflow. That's how I work. Um, but it also I have to paste the responses and what I've done back into Jira, for example, um, because we, I can't connect the two up. Um, there, it is possible to do. But yeah, it's clunky because we have two different Jira systems, one for the community and one for Acquia. Um, so those are my main downsides of how the, of this integration. But so far, I mean, it does work really well for me. It does allow me to keep an eye on what is coming up and what I need to do. Um, daily rituals are really key and making sure that I hold myself accountable and keep using the processes and workflows because as soon as I stop using them, I just yeah i just lose all sense of anything really and just i'm working very reactively whereas it's much more effective from my perspective if i can actually plan things if someone asks me to do something i can put it into a system and say yes i can do that and i'll tell you when rather than have to drop everything and do something straight away so those are my kind of thoughts and ramblings um, i hope that might be useful or helpful for some people and feel free to drop me a message if you've got any questions